Well, hello, Bob Dendry here, and welcome back to the channel. And we're here for our second episode of Cities Skylines today. I'm really excited to get back into Lorikeet Valley. So let us get started. Um, first thing I've noticed is I have missed a little bit in terms of my water pipes. So we're going to quickly fix that up. A um, couple of other things. You might notice the LUT is completely changed. I, for some reason, I completely stuffed up setting it up. And it's very, like, dark and washed out. So I've changed over those settings. So it looks a lot better now, I think. Um, second off, um, I actually messed up with how I've set up some of my mods. Um, I didn't realize that, it, as I mentioned, I've started um, like a whole new, um, a whole new like mod set for this. I deleted and started over pretty much, and I didn't realize that the 81 tiles mod is completely incompatible with the more vehicles mod. So I had them both on there. Um, more vehicles, once you've got it on a save game, it, it's pretty much you, you know it can't be removed. Um, and 81 tiles crashes when it is. Uh, when you try loading it with more uh, more vehicles save as well. So I've had to remove 81 tiles. If you know of an alternate mod or if there's a way to fix that, please let me know in the comments because I obviously right now it's a small town, but I'd love to have the opportunity to spread out beyond the, the default nine tiles. So let me know if there's a way to fix that, please. Um, and if there is, obviously I'll get that whatever alternate mod in there. Quick smart. But enough background, let's get started on what we're going to be working on today. So, um, a couple of things I'd like to do. So, as you can see, we've got massive demand for housing. And so we're probably wanting to be setting up a new neighborhood. And I'm thinking on top of this ridge here would be a, a really nice um, place for sort of a bit more of an upmarket neighborhood. Um, so I'm keen to get that started. Some feedback I got in my last episode actually from my fiance is that I rotate the camera too much and it made it feel a little bit ill. Um, and if you're in the same boat, I'm going to try my hardest to, uh, to not rotate it quite so much in this episode, but I give no guarantees. So if I just went to rotate the camera right then, um, and but just managed to catch myself. So what are we going to start with? Yeah, probably getting some uh, residential down is going to be a nice start. Um, and I'm thinking probably we're going to follow this secondary grid that we've set up here. Um, just to get a little bit of residential in um, for this sort of start of this build. We're just setting up there for a, um, a bridge when it comes time to, uh, to cross the river. Second thing, I'm thinking we might start to upgrade some of these roads to, um, to not, not to full roads at this point, but to some of these sort of rural um, asphalt roads. So they still don't have curbs or anything like that, but they're a little bit, uh, a little bit nicer than the standard um, dirt roads. I think that looks really good. I love this asset. Um, I mean, obviously all the default um, bits and pieces from City Skylines are all pretty awesome, but some of these custom assets that people make are absolutely amazing. Um, I also figured out, or mostly figured out, <laughs> there's a, like ugly textualist houses. I was missing a... Um, um, a mod, the building variations mod, which I thought I had, but for some reason I might have lost it. 
Um, there's still some not great looking assets in here. Um, I think some of them are older, potentially, but I still think a lot of them look really cool. So I, I think I'll probably leave them in for the moment at least, unless, you know, the people out there think they really need to go. But anyway, I'm going to finish upgrading this side here. And we'll lay a little bit more grid down. Alright, get a few more houses down. But we just need to start working on our little suburb we're going to build over here. Uh, it's raining, so let's get that turned off. There we go. Now let's get building. So, I think we might lay a um, sort of border road to start with that will just make its way around the uh, around the edge of this sort of cliff top, we'll call it. And then we'll be able to lay our grid through there. We don't want to grid this whole area yet, because um, it's going to be a massive suburb if we, you know, grid all of this up. Um, but we'll lay down sort of a... Um, uh, at least a little area that we'll um, expect to be using at least. We can probably join up to our little highway here, but um, we won't be doing that as of yet anyway. We will be joining up this one though. And get it at a nice 90 or thereabouts. Yeah, good enough. Okay, so what are we going to do here? Um, I was talking about gridding before. I think we probably won't actually do this as a grid. Try and get a more sort of organic um, design here. But there probably will, will be some elements of gridding. One thing I want to do is to maintain this cool feature here. So I think we might start by bordering that with a road and um, set that up to be a new park as well. I think that's going to be a nice big area for our residents to use. And as well, that probably gives us a nice um, sort of template that we can use for our other, I, I guess, road sort of um, structure we're going to have set up here. So we can have a nice circular road pattern, I guess you could say. get some crossroads set up. Um, I think we'll probably have fairly large blocks. And we might potentially, yeah, okay. <laughs> I've worked out what I'm doing. So we're gonna go fairly large block length, but we're gonna have some pedestrian connectivity in between. Because we want this to be a fairly walkable area, I think. Um, and everything will sort of join up with, with this park we're going to be building here. Um, what have we got here? We don't have great um, selection of assets for paths here. But that's okay. We'll just start with some basic paths and we can make it a little bit more sexy if we want to <laughs> sometime down the line. Okay, perfect. So we've got some, some nice little blocks that we can start with now. And we'll just need to get some water running up there. So we can uh, start putting, laying down some houses. As you can see, my pups aren't exactly under my roads. <laughs> but um, 
we'll have to pretend that they they are. Um, we may need some more water coverage here, but we'll just leave it for the moment. Um, I think we've also got a really good opportunity to have a walking path up um, up here, so we can join up these two communities as well. So let's see how that works out. <laughs> I think a nice winding path will probably serve us quite well. Probably a little bit more winding than that though. How's that look? Um, that's not too bad. It's a little bit, a little bit steep, but um, I think it works. And yeah, we'll just get this adjusted a little tiny bit as well. Perfect. Okay. Also want to get rid of some of these fallen trees that are just on the road, as usual. <laughs> okay, so let's get some uh, some residential down. So I'm thinking we can probably get a little bit of light commercial um, on Green Street here. And pretty much everything else is going to be... Um, it's going to be residential at this stage. We probably will need an elementary school. Yeah, we will because this is going to be a little bit of a, a more sort of upmarket area. We're going to go with a community school. Um, we also have unlocked high schools and I must have missed that part. <laughs> so we need to get a couple of those down as well so we can get some people educated as well. And I'm just having a look to see where might be a good place for um, a high school in our existing area and unfortunately it's looking like we're going to have to acquire this land to build it so sorry to all the residents there but your sacrifice has made the community a better place and we'll get an institute of creative arts over here as well um, We'll put it, yeah, we'll put it nearby to our, to our primary school there. That's fine. Okay. How are we going for healthcare? Could probably do with a medical clinic. I might go with one of um, my custom assets here. It's a doctor's office. And we'll put that close to the main road where our commercial is going to go. Okay, time to get some zoning done. So this is a massive new development um, and I've just remembered as I've started doing this that we don't have any power connected to this area so my bad apologies to the poor residents that are going to be moving into their new uh, houses and setting up candles but that is Okay, we hopefully should be able to join this up directly here. I'm hoping. Just need a, a couple of uh, houses to, to build here and that should join up fine. Come on, you just need one building in the right place there and we'll be set. But it doesn't seem to want to build. <laughs> okay. Alternatively, just going to do that. Easy. And then the other problem we've got is we've got these two halves of the uh, <laughs> neighbourhood uh, building up independently um, and thus we don't have power on this side either. I don't believe I've downloaded any of the local... Um, no. Oh, hang on. Maybe. Wow, that is a lot of... Uh, <laughs> No, so we don't have any little local, um, unfortunately, but we can get a substation down here, which will join them up. Cool. It's got that nice little uh, electric substation. You would probably not want to live right next door to that, but um, it happens. <laughs> and they've joined up. Perfect. Excellent. So we'll just leave that to continue to develop. Let's get a, uh, a district laid down here as well. So it'll be its own little suburb. I 
we're we gonna call this. I think we're gonna call it Banksia Hills. Perfect. How is our industry area going? This seems to be doing all right. We're making a little bit of a profit, but not too much. So potentially what we might lay down here is some worker barracks. To increase efficiency. Um, what I'm gonna do here is just gonna build um, All right. Is this a one unit road? It is. What do you mean slope too steep? How is slope too steep? It looks fine to me. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Whoa. What is going on there? Okay, we can fix that. That's all right. There we go. So I'm just going to put down a few uh, workers' barracks. Which will increase the efficiency of our industry area here. Also notice we've got some... Uh, um, cattle sheds are complaining that we have not enough raw materials. Uh, to be honest, I've put down too many grain silos anyway. Um, we probably shouldn't have that many. So I'm going to set a couple to empty. And then we'll probably just get rid of them once we've done that. Alrighty. Now, next project I'd like to work on is um, a little bit of public transport. We're not going to need too much. But as we've got sort of a couple of distinct areas, um, we do need to provide some transport for our residents. So we can... Um, you know, if you're in Banksia Hills and you want to come down to the valley for, for work or to shop, um, we need to have some public transport opportunities to allow that to happen. So we have some different options here um, in terms of... So we're going to lay down, I think, just a regular biofuel bus depot. And we... I'm going to put it in the industry area, actually. I considered putting it a little bit by itself, but it makes sense for it to be in um, an industry area, I think, at least. We've got a couple of other must have options from the ride pack that we could look at a little bit later as well. Um, on the ride pack, um, that's pretty much what I'm going to be exclusively using. I really, really love the pack. I've got pretty much everything installed that you can uh, use with that pack. So we'll be using probably a, a variety of the different bus options that we have available from that pack. But it's time to get down our first bus route. I think it makes sense for it to start and end um, at our sort of education campus we've got set up here and we can run it down our sort of edge of our park here and great thing about our uh, walking tracks we have is that it allows easy access to the bus route as well. So we'll have it come down here and just have a few stops on our main street. And we can use our roundabout here to turn around. That may be a bad idea that I regret down the line, but for the moment that's what we're going to do. So not too many stops, it doesn't do too much. It's a fairly direct um, sort of route, you know, in and out. Perfect. So let's get um, our uh, buses set up. So we've got a few uh, like fairly recent buses that um, uh, like with the city line pack for ride it's fairly recently come out and I've not actually played um, with the city line buses so I think we're going to go with some of the city line so let's go with A300Ls um, let's just have a look and see what they look like uh, 
Oh, those are... <laughs> those look nice. I like it. Perfect. So we'll just leave that bus route to run for a little while. And hopefully we start to cut down on some car trips already, even at this early stage. Um, also with uh, Traffic Manager, I play with despawning turned off generally. I had it turned on at the start of this, uh, this playthrough and in the last video, but generally I play with it turned off because I think it's a bit more of a challenge to, um, uh, I, I guess, to optimize your routes and stuff like that. So hopefully we can, uh, we can keep up with the traffic. In fact, let's have a look and see what our traffic's like right now. 87%. I mean, easy, you know, it's a, it's a new game. So it, that doesn't surprise me at all, but especially with um, sort of having just a couple of major spines, we don't have any formal collector or arterial roads at all at this point. Expect that to go down and we will need to remedy that down the line a little bit. But um, Banksy is doing well. We do still have a fair bit of commercial um, that we need to look at putting in. And makes sense to put it down um, this sort of main road. We already have, well, we almost already have <laughs> water serving that area, but that is fixed up now. And we have some abandoned buildings, which are abandoning due to not enough workers. Hopefully that's taken care of now. That is absolutely ugly. <laughs> We're definitely going to have to move that. I don't like it. I wonder if we could sneak it on this corner here. Would it look okay? Yeah, it looks a lot better. We can just fill in this area here that we've left with a bit more residential zoning. Okay, now I think it's time to build our park for Banksia Hills. So this is going to be a little bit bigger than our Lorik Pigate Lorik Park down here, but um, I think this will be a real asset to this area and I think it'll hopefully draw more people to move into the area and it'll allow us to expand a little bit more as well. So first of all, let's get a park area laid down here. And we're going to call it Hilltop Park. And I think we're going to put our main entrance on Green Street here. Rather than being like in the in the actual suburban area. Obviously though you'll be able to enter from that area regardless. But I think we want our main traffic sort of entrance to be away from our houses. And I've got a few entrances down. Lay some fences down. Might turn the snaps off. Make it a little bit easier. And we'll just uh, <laughs> go around our school. expense uh, a bit more so it looks a bit nicer and might just smooth out this bit of terrain here as well okay all right I think that's good Oop, actually need to smooth this bit out a little bit more as well yeah, I think that's good. Alright, so let's get some paths down. 
Uh, once again, we're going to go with the paths without trees because we're going to do our own decoration with some Australian style trees. And what I save there. I'm going to give the visitors a few different ways to get around to the park. A few different things to sort of, you know, do to uh, keep things interesting. So I think that's a nice little uh, layout for our path there. And what do we have? Because we did unlock a few things, I noticed, in our previous park. In fact, that unlocked before I started recording. <laughs> um, so we've now got a chessboard. Might, might be nice, but we need a nice flat pad to, uh, to place that down on. Um, where is terrain heights? Okay. So probably right here is going to be our best bet for um, laying that down. And it doesn't look too bad. Can do with a little bit of work, I think, but um, it's a nice start. Got some buildings on fire. We don't have any fire coverage up here actually which is something we might need to consider but uh, hopefully <laughs> hopefully the fire department gets there in time to save that house a little info booth down by our main entrance and yeah, we can probably do with a few different restrooms as well uh, probably near our different entrances Okay, and how are we going for power? We're just missing on joining up there. So is there anything else we can lay down that would help join that up? Um, does our food stall know it's a prop? So I don't think that will... Uh, don't think that will join the power up. We're going to lay some down anyway because they look cool. No, definitely not. Okay. remove it later if we uh, expand a little bit more but of course that that fits right in right having a little substation at your uh, middle of your park I think it works fine okay we just need to yep all right perfect and how are we going for entertainment yeah so perfect we've got enough to get to our next level and I think it's time to lay down some trees. Now I have Bob installed. I wonder if I can remove the... Excellent. We can actually use Bob to change our trees to something different. Trees. Okay, I've worked it out. <laughs> Need to use trees, not props. Okay. So. <laughs> I'm just having a look at, you know, some of the options. Bottle brush. They're going to be quite small. Yep. There we go, so we've got some iron bark trees that we've uh, replaced and said, and I think that looks a little bit nicer. So, I'm, I'm all about it. <laughs> now that we've done that, uh, I want to get some more trees around the area. 
this would probably be really um, an area that was already densely, you know, forested with lots of native trees um, that was just sort of oh, marked for um, for protection um, and not being allowed to develop. So we've leveled up lorikeet farms, which is great. So I'm just going to finish off placing down some trees. Then we'll jump over there and see what um, what sort of options we have for getting some more fields down and um, getting some more production happening. So let's have a look. I love bottle brush trees. So I don't think we're going to have like completely tree lined paths. We'll probably place some trees sort of around the paths, but not, you know, up and down every single path. So I think Hilltop Park looks quite good to start with. Um, might need to do some work a little bit later on to make it a little bit prettier, but I think for the moment that's good. So just before we finish off, I just want to have a look at the new um, assets we've unlocked for Lorikeet Farms and if need be, get some place down so we can, uh, as I said, keep boosting our production. Okay, so we now have some medium crop and fruit fields. So let's compare. Um, so our small crop fields, 4,800 units per week, medium 8,000 units per week. And they, and they do so actually a lot more efficiently than um, the small crop fields. So they employ a lot less workers per, um, per unit, I guess. So what sort of size are these? So we can probably go through and replace um, two of the small crop fields with one medium. So we might do that just to get things falling a little bit more efficiently. So our yield is actually going to be a little bit less. But that's fine. We've got more crops than we know what to do with anyway. Turn these into greenhouses as well. Cool. And what else have we got? Milking parlor. So it's another um, industry that turns our. Um, our crops into animal products. So that's fine. We don't really need that. So I think there's not, not much else we really need to do. Oh, actually, we did unlock a unique factory, didn't we? So we've got the bakery that we unlocked before that I completely forgot to lay down, actually which is something we probably want to start using, but I think we'll leave that until next week because we're pretty much done now for what we're going to be doing in this episode. But we did unlock the lemonade factory as well, which was cool. Um, but we need glass for that, which we don't have at the moment because we don't have an ore industry down. Um, let's have a look. That's not what I wanted. Let's have a look at our overlay here. 
So we've got a little bit of ore over here that we do actually have unlocked. But we probably need to do a little bit of work to get that working. So that might be a, a little bit more effort than we can go into at the moment. But, I mean, at this point, that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. We've been able to lay down a, a new suburb in Banksia Hills. Um, our, <laughs> our residential demand has shot straight back up anyway, so we're definitely going to be laying some more housing for our next episode. If you've enjoyed this episode, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell so you get a ding to your device the next time I post a video. Please leave suggestions in the comments, I'm absolutely happy to name things after whatever you want named after, within reason of course. Um, and if you think I'm doing something a bit silly or a bit wrong, and you have a suggestion for how I can tighten it up, let me know and I will take on that feedback, absolutely. But until next time, I'm Bob Dendry, this is Cities Skylines, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.